Good morning, Jim. Good to see you. So how are things going? How's Tony doing? Uh, let's see, I do have a few announcements, um, but uh, before we do that, um, again, for those of you watching, make sure you have a cracker or a cookie or a piece of bread, something like that, to share communion together, as well as something to drink, whether it's wine or juice, coffee, milk, whatever. Oh, I'm sorry to hear Tony's not feeling well again. That's too bad. Well, tell him to rest up today. <laughs> Hope that that pain goes away again. Back pain is some of the worst, I have to say. All right, it is 10 o'clock. So welcome everyone to our worship service, our live stream worship service for Holy Covenant MCC for Sunday, August 1st, 2021. Um, and once again, if you don't have it already, bread, cracker, roll, cookie, as well as something to drink so that we can share communion together later on. Some upcoming events, um, Holy Covenant's Thrive with Pride Cafe which is a support group for seniors. We'll have a meeting on this coming Thursday, August 5th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, there's more information and the link is in our newsletter, which is available uh, uh, here on Facebook, on our page and on our website as well. We do have an ongoing need for lawn mowing and garden help, especially a uh, watering. Uh, contact me or Marianne if you would like uh, to be part of that work. If you have even an hour or two to help out, that would be wonderful. SAGE, which is a social support group for LGBTQ seniors, continues to meet via Zoom on Fridays at 1 p.m. Um, the Senior Center in Bellwood uh, needed some repairs. There was... <laughs> This is going to be familiar to Holy Covenant folks, some flooding, uh, so that needed some repairs. And so they're getting that done before folks start meeting back at, in the building. So they are still meeting via Zoom for now. Uh, Pints with the Pastor, it's an informal gathering for conversation and a no host dinner uh, will be meeting. We are confident we are claiming it on Thursday, August 12th at 6 p.m. Um, again, assuming the COVID restrictions allow us to do that, um, we will be meeting on the outside patio um, so that that will, that will help. Um, however, if restrictions do not allow them to have, the, um, you know, with restrictions on numbers of uh, people inside and, and so on, we may not be able to do that. However, we are planning on it at this time. Um, Thursday, August 12th at 6 p.m. Keep an eye on the newsletter and constant contact in our webpage uh, to make sure uh, that it's still on. And we are indeed hoping to begin hybrid, that is both live the streaming and in-person worship in the next couple of weeks. Uh, it depends on my mobility and what happens with uh, the variants of COVID-19, um, as always the last year or so, we've had to be flexible. Um, our worship team is working on ways to integrate uh, live stream worship with uh, in-church worship. So, um, you know, we are hoping to be able to do that. 
Um, be kind to us, forgive us our awkwardness and glitches as we do our best to provide that sacred experience for everyone. As you feel led, we would appreciate your generosity. It is needed now more than ever. Um, you may give via PayPal, Square, electronic check, mailing a check. Um, we are very grateful for those of you who have given, who have made donations. Um, we appreciate it very, very much. And if you have any questions, um, please feel free to contact me or one of our board members um, Roxanne Victory, Barb Adams, Latsaris, or Joni Baird um, with any questions. I am available by email, phone, Facebook Messenger, text uh, for any pastoral care needs you may have. Don't hesitate to contact me, please. And I want to give credit where credit is due. Our communion prayer and closing prayer are by Reverend Thomas Shulman. And let's see, brief look at the comments here. I'm sorry to hear about your knees, Jim. That That's terrible. I, guys, we're starting to do better, and now things are hurting again. I'm sorry. And good morning, Joni. Good to see you. Let us pray together. Generous God, Often we do not know what we are looking for. We are searching. We feel lost in a world which seems to sell everything beside true meaning and love. You offer us all that we need. Christ is the bread of life. All we need to do is take and eat, and you fill us with more than we can imagine. We pray for open hearts and minds, and that we can be ambassadors of your love to the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the Wisdom of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 2 through 15. The Hebrew people began to complain against Moses and Aaron there in the wilderness. The people of Israel said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Holy One in the land of Egypt, when we sat next to pots of meat and ate bread until we were filled. But now you have brought the whole community out into this wilderness to die of hunger. Then God said to Moses, Look, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people will go out and gather a day's portion every day, so that I can test them to see if they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they brought in, it will be twice as much as the daily gathering. So Moses and Aaron said to the Israelites, in the evening you will know that it was the Holy One who brought you up out of Egypt, and in the morning you will witness the glory of God, the one to whom you directed your complaints. For who are we that you should complain to us? Moses continued, It is God who will give you meat, meat in the evening for your meal, and all the bread you want in the morning. Because the Creator has heard your complaints. For it's not to us that you are complaining, who are we, but to God. Then Moses said to Aaron, Tell the whole Israelite community, Present yourselves before God, who has heard your complaints. As Aaron was speaking to the whole community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of God appearing in the form of a cloud. Then the Holy One spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the people of Israel. Say this to them, In the evening you will eat meat, and in the morning you will have your fill of bread. Then you will know that I, the Holy One, am your God. So it came about that in the evening quail flew in and all around the camp. 
and in the morning there was a layer of dew all around the camp. When the layer of dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were flakes of something, delicate, powdery, fine as frost. When they saw this, the people of Israel said to each other, What is it? Not knowing. All right. To con that neither Jesus nor his followers were there at Tiberias, they got into boats and crossed to Capernaum, looking for Jesus. When they found Jesus on the other side of the lake, they said, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them, The truth of the matter is, you're not looking for me because you've seen signs, but because you've eaten your fill of the bread. You shouldn't be working for perishable food, but for life-giving food that lasts for all eternity. This the Chosen One can give to you, for the Chosen One bears the seal of Abba God. At this the people said, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus replied, This is the work of God to believe in the one whom God has sent. So they asked Jesus, what sign are you going to give to show us that we should believe in you? What will you do? Our ancestors had manna to eat. In the desert, as the scripture says, God gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, the truth of the matter is, Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Teacher, they said, give us this bread from now on. Jesus explained to them, I am the bread of life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. No one who believes in me will be thirsty. These are the words of God for the people. Amen. So our message today is titled Bread of Life. Not too surprising. Will you play, please pray with and for me? Blessed one, open our hearts and spirits to your grace. May we so receive it that we wish to share it with others. In all your names. Amen. Bread, it's the basic stuff of life in much of the world, isn't it? Areas of the world where wheat doesn't grow have similar foods based on other grains like corn and rice and barley, and millet, and it's much like what we think of as bread. Think of things like tortillas, naan, pita, rice cakes. And bread is versatile in many eras of history Rounds of bread were used as plates or bowls, or they took the form of pastries, um, like pasties in Cornwall and, and Wales, or it was, it was thin and was used to wrap the food, dumplings and tortillas and so on. Bread can be sweet, like cinnamon rolls, or savory, like a pumpernickel loaf. Uh, one of the many benefits of living in Germany when I did was the sheer variety of bread and rolls that was available at even the smallest neighborhood bakery. As a child, my family always had bread on the table, even if, if so that if we weren't filled up by our dinner, we could have bread and butter, you know. Bread. The Israelites longed for bread as they wandered in the desert remembering that they had had their fill of bread in Egypt. Now, whether that was a hopeful memory or not, we don't know, but lack of food was not one of the complaints they had against Pharaoh, remember? Bread was part of the feeding of the 5,000 that we heard about last week, bread and fish. 
Bread is broken and shared at Jesus' last earthly meal in the upper room. The risen Christ shares fish and bread with his followers on the lake shore. Bread. It would be simple enough to draw a line between the manna of the Israelites and Jesus himself, but I don't think that's right. Jesus is actually making a distinction between the manna and himself as the bread of life. The Israelites complain to Moses that they're hungry, and he tells them that they aren't, or shouldn't be maybe, angry with him, but with God. Because God's the one who brought them into the desert, not Moses and Aaron, who are simply following God's command. And God feeds them with manna. Now, the word manna is a joke in Hebrew. Um, it means something like whatchamacallit or thing gummy, or, you know, what's it? A word for something that has no name. But it's come, the word manna, the, has come to mean a blessing, an unexpected gift from heaven, an unlikely source of food for the wandering Israelites. But Jesus says he's not feeding them with manna. Manna was the gift of God for a people demanding food. Jesus himself is the bread of life, given to those who hunger for God's realm. The manna melts away. We, we read later on in Exodus that it can't be kept. It's only good for the morning, and then it vanishes, except on the sixth day when it leaves enough for the, the Sabbath day. But it's not permanent. It's a temporary way to feed the wanderers. But the bread of life, Jesus says, will feed God's people forever. Those who believe in Jesus will never be hungry or thirsty. Now, obviously, people who believe in Jesus do go physically hungry and thirsty. Happens every day, doesn't it? But spiritual hunger and the longing for a spiritual home, a refuge, those can be fed by the love of God. Our bread, the mainstay of our diet, the focus of our meals, is the presence of Jesus and Jesus' teachings in our lives. People who do the work of God, that is, believe in the one sent by God, Jesus, and then act on his teachings, are people who seek to follow Jesus. They're looking for that bread of life. As we gather around God's table, as we will do in a few moments, we will remember God's presence with us in the bread, not as temporary stopgap manna, but as the very staff of life, the bread of life in all God's names. Amen. And we come now to community prayers, and I do not know how many of you were able to reconnect to the second um, video here, so I don't know um, uh, if any of you are, um, are, are back with me or not, um, but if you are, please do include any prayer requests in our uh, in the comment box and we will include them in our prayers this morning so let us pray O oh christ you once said i am the bread of life whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty today we yearn for your abundant life we hunger for the bread of heaven to sustain us on our journey to find you. Reveal yourself in the moving and mundane moments that comprise our lives. Be our ever-present companion. May we feel in our grief, hurt, sorrow, and joy. Nourish us with your steadfast love and abundant mercy along the way. 
source of love, this is a precarious and tenuous time as we learn to live in new ways with COVID-19 still in our midst. We are so grateful for the miracle of the vaccinations, yet are concerned for the surge of the Delta variant. And there remains a vaccine in inequity around the world. Help us to find ways to bring care and healing to all who need it. We still do not know what long-term effects the pandemic will have on our collective health economies and social structures. Remind us that our being and well-being are tethered to one another. May we place our trust in you and may your transformational love unclench the grip that fear has on us. The USA gymnast Simone Biles stepped away from competing in the Olympics in Japan to focus on her mental well-being. Holy One, we are grateful for those who articulate their need for help, who prioritize their health over others' expectations, and who know the freedom that can come from setting boundaries. May we all hear your still, quiet voice that reassures us, we are enough. We are your beloved for no other reason than our existence. There is nothing we can do to earn your love or our salvation. O Creator, your creation continues to cry from the desolation and destruction caused by climate change. No corner of the world is unaffected. Flooding in South America and Southeast Asia, record-setting heat waves and wildfires in Australia and the U.S. and devastating cyclones in Africa. Scientists have noticed an unprecedented surge of climate-related disasters since 2019. How can, this, how can this news be unprecedented, yet sound so familiar? Stir our complacent hearts. Let us not be fatigued by the magnitude of the devastation, for you are a God of small beginnings. Guide us toward better understanding of how we might be change agents against the rise of climate change. Cast a vision of how we may be better stewards of your beloved creation and all that lies within it. Alpha and Omega, there is no beginning, no beginning or end to your love, mercy, and grace. You encompass all that was, all that is, and all that will be. Therefore, we uplift in our prayers all those challenges, conflicts, and ruptures that seem beyond repair or reconciliation. We pray for your children in North and South Korea as leaders within both countries have articulated a commitment to improve diplomatic ties and rebuild trust. We pray for your children in China as the government is expanding its nuclear capabilities with the construction of a second field of missile silos in its western deserts. We pray for your children in the Tigray, Ethiopia as conflict between the central government and the Tigray People's Liberation Front has begun to spread to other parts of northern Ethiopia. And attacks continue against Eritrean refugees in the region. We pray for your children in Afghanistan as there have been escalating attacks on civilians as Taliban insurgents have recently captured more areas and seized vital border control points. God, we thirst for your justice and hunger for your peace. We pray for the day when all will turn their weapons into plowshares. We hope for the day when we will break bread together and feast upon your abundant love. We pray in the name of your child and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And even as we pray for the world, we pray for individuals. For Jim and Tony as they struggle with pain in back and in knees. We pray for Artis and his Aunt Gwen on the passing of his Uncle Bill. And we pray for all 
more. We lift up those who seek employment and for those who seek job security as well. And also the prayers of our hearts. Speak them and know that God hears. And so we gather up these prayers and we offer them to God as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we gather around God's table to share that meal known as communion. Have your bread or cookie ready as well as something to drink. My friends, God is with you. Lift up your hearts, people of God, lift them up to the Holy One, so that they might be filled with a new spirit. Let us give thanks to God who loves us. May our willing spirits offer praises to the one who feeds us. And our greatest joy is to offer God our thanks and praise. Creator, grace giver, healer of our brokenness, all that is beautiful was created for our eyes. All that is wonderful was created for our awe. All that is majestic did for our praise. All that is mystery was created for our silence. But despite everything you have given us, we are not satisfied. Believing life is about our appetites, we choose the moldy bread of the world Knowing our only hope is from you, we continue to rebel. Called to live in unity with one another, we cling to all that divides us. And yet you refuse to let go of us, sending your only child, Jesus, to call us to life in you. We have fallen and you lift us up. We have forsaken you and you redeem us. We are broken, and you make us whole. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the faithful of every time and place to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of every mercy. All creation praises one God, one spirit. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who gifts all God's people. Hosanna. In the highest. Holy are you, God of grace and tenderness, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your child, our guide and friend. Though we look for him for all the wrong reasons, he holds out the bread of life to us. Though we offer the cross to him, he graces us with life. Though we thirst for more and more, he offers us the cup of salvation. Though we gossip and slander one another, he speaks the truth in love to us. Though we would divide each other by class, race, or condition, he calls us to oneness in you. Recalling your steadfast love in Christ and knowing we cannot understand your grace until that eternal day when we can know your heart, we take this bread and this cup praising and blessing you for these gifts of hope and joy. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ died, a seeming prisoner of death. Christ was raised, 
so all might be freed in resurrection love. Christ will return, finishing the work of God. Holy God of truth, though we come to your table as many, may your Holy Spirit make us one body and one spirit. As you feed us with the bread of life, may we feed those who know true hunger. As your justice illumines our heart's darkness, May we be a beacon to the oppressed and lost. As you speak to us the truth in love, may we be a voice for the powerless and forgotten. As you restore us to wholeness, may we bind up our shattered world. Through Christ who saved us, all glory and honor are yours. God who created us in your own image, through the Holy Spirit in our midst, making us your people now and forever. So when Jesus gathered with his closest friends that night in the upper room, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his friends, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, opened for you. And then he took the cup, and he blessed it too and shared it with them saying, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of life given for you. So take now, eat and drink and remember. Loving and Holy One, we thank you for these gifts in which you have shared yourself with us. May they strengthen us as we go into the world to share your love and grace with others. Amen. So again, I apologize for that, um, that break. I don't know what happened. The, the stream just stopped. So um, we'll, I, hopefully Barb can stitch those two together and we'll have just one video instead of two. Um, yeah, I don't know, I just don't know what happened, but thank you for sticking with us. Um, so or, or repeat the announcements in case you missed some. Um, our Thrive with Pride Cafe, which is a support group for seniors We'll have a meeting this coming Thursday, the 5th, at 7 p.m. via Zoom, and the link is in our newsletter. And the newsletter is available on Facebook and our website, and if you're not getting it and would like to, um, please uh, let us know. You can email us at social media, uh, at the social media email, or um, put a, a comment in the chat box here, or message us on Messenger and we will add you to our mailing list. Uh, we do have that ongoing need for lawn mowing and garden watering help as well as weeding and pruning. Contact me or Mary Ann if you would uh, like to be part of that. And SAGE, the social support group for LGBTQ seniors, continues to meet via Zoom on Fridays at 1 p.m. Um, the building is actually undergoing some repairs, the Senior Center in Bellwood, where we usually meet, uh, we're meeting pre-pandemic, um, needs some repairs, so we are continuing to meet via Zoom. And we are hoping uh, COVID um, allowing and my mobility allowing to begin a hybrid worship, which is a combination of live and live stream. Uh, worship um, later in August. Um, it's going to depend on many, many things. My mobility, the um, um, the opinion of my surgeon, as well as and physical therapist, um, as well as the COVID nineteen situation. So, um, stay posted. <laughs> um, again, don't forget to make your donations via PayPal, Square electronic check, paper check, um, 
We were, we're thankful for all your gifts and they are needed. We do still have ongoing um, expenses, um, such as utilities and insurance and so on. And now my friends, let us go into the world with God's gifts. We can perform God's works of mercy and life. And let us go into the world with the bread of heaven in our hands. We will share God's grace, which gives life to everyone. Let us go as the one body of faith and fellowship, and we will go to witness to the one spirit of hope and faith. Amen. Hello, Deborah. It's good. Well, I'm glad some of you reconnected. Um, again, I just do not know uh, quite what happened with the video there um, in the first part. But um, yeah, so hopefully it won't happen again. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's we'll, we'll be flexible, right? Take care, everyone. Blessings and have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead. Take care.